What's the word, y'all? Yes, they made a video because we thought that Porzingis, Malcolm Brogdon, and Marcus Morris was a part of this big old three-team trade. And that trade fell through. And, and for hours, I contemplated whether or not I should keep my video up talking about it. And good thing I did. Because everything I said in the video about Porzingis' is fit with the Boston Celtics still reigns true because that trade failed, but not the trade, a more interesting trade ended up happening. And now I'm seeing that the Knicks and the Clippers have talked about a Paul George trade. Today could be crazy, y'all. Today could be crazy with all of the stuff that could potentially go on. But a more interesting trade happened last night where it was Marcus Smart being a part of the trade going to the Grizzlies and uh, Tyce Jones told the world that he wanted to be a starter point guard in the league so they sent him to the one spot that he could potentially be a starting point guard which is the Washington Wizards and now my lawn care service is here and I, do, do y'all want to go through that I got to get this video up some people said I was a wash content creator and it, it made me shed one single tear because two years ago Kenny Beecham when that trade happened at midnight with a turn on that camera start to record and got that video about one o'clock but nowadays as a father I, midnight is time to go to bed forget about work so here we are doing it 10 hours later and boy have I had mixed feelings about this one this is about to be a really good case study for the Boston Celtics dealing with the intangible part of basketball. Because anybody that watched the Boston Celtics last season can recognize that the Marcus Smart that we got last season is not the same as the one that won Defensive Player of the Year the year before that. You know, he had fallen off at least a little bit on both sides. I mean, the things that stayed the same is he's still fiery. He'll still put his body on the line, take charge, and try to be the primary defender on the other team's best player. But he... I mean, I felt very confident putting Derek White on my all-defensive team over Marcus Smart. So that just tells you something. But again, those those intangible things, I think his sports are real. And we're about to see how real they are because I think a lot of people look at points, rebounds, assists, field goal percentage, three-point percentage, the advanced numbers, and that's how they boil down what an NBA player is when in reality, it can be a lot more. And I think Marcus Smart embodies that idea of being more than just what you provide on the basketball court. Maybe Brad Stevens saw that the season that we got for Marcus Smart last season and saw that, hey, maybe this is who Marcus Smart is about to become um, and got rid of him earlier rather than later where his value was still high. Because you got to think about it. They traded Marcus Smart and, and got back two first round picks from the Grizzlies. Now, one of those first round picks is a 24th overall pick or something like that. And then the other one is for next season where even though John Morant is suspended for 25 games, I feel confident that the Grizzlies are going to be a good team next season too. So, thank, so, so, welcome to the to the video, Koba. Um, so, I can see those draft picks being the 20s. So, yeah, you can say whatever about it. But you still turn Marcus Smart into Porzingis and two first-round picks. So, Brad Stevens, congratulations again. Or maybe not, because maybe Marcus Smart meant a lot more to that team than the points, rebounds, and assists. I would let him stay in here, but he's got new tags on his collar, and he just makes so much noise just by moving. I, we already got the lawn people outside. I can't have him clinking and clackling with the, with the tags. Okay, um, we're gonna have to shift gears. I'll be back. All right, this is the basement setup. We, we film here in, in, in the case of emergency, break of a case of emergency, and here we are. I don't even know why I was at. Let's talk about Marcus Smart with the, the Memphis Grizzlies, I guess. Because the Porzingis stuff we talked about yesterday, and all of that reigns true to today, with his fit alongside Robert Williams, his fit alongside Al Horford, the reassurance of Al Horford, all is true. The only hiccup that I have with this one um, is, of course, what, what did Marcus Smart mean to the organization? And secondarily, there now is a lot of injury risk with this team. Yesterday, when we thought it was going to be Malcolm Brogdon for Przingis, I was way more comfortable because you get rid of one injury risk for another one, and now you have both of those guys still on the roster. Is there another move to be done with Malcolm Brogdon? From the reports that came out yesterday, it seemed like no team would be, really be interested because the injury the injury that he's going through is more than meets the eye. So you got him as a health risk, Porzingis is a health risk, and Robert Williams is a health risk. Scares me a little bit. But again, you'd be willing to sacrifice half the season from those dudes if that means come mid of April, you can get 16 straight game wins or whatever it is. So again, something we can monitor a little bit down the line because I'm not completely sure that the Boston Celtics are done. But to flip Marcus Smart to, to Porzingis and two first round picks on surface level is a dub. I remember when the tweet originally came out that there was two first round picks heading to the Boston Celtics in exchange to Marcus Smart. And I saw a lot of people say that that was an overpay. And I don't necessarily agree. Again, even if we're saying that Marcus Smart this season is the Marcus Smart that you're going to get if you're the Memphis Grizzlies and you won't get the DPOY candidate again. I don't think it's an over. We talk about the 24th overall pick this season. And next season, though, John Morant is going through 25 game suspension. I feel confident that the Grizzlies are going to be a good team again. So two, two picks in the 20s for Marcus Smart. And this is another case of it not being necessarily about on-court basketball stuff. Yeah, you're getting rid of Tyus Jones, who told the world that he wanted to be a starter. But 
Marcus Smart has the ability to run on ball when Ja Moran is gone and then slide over and play off guard once Ja Moran comes back. But deeper than anything, as good as a team the Memphis Grizzlies have been over the last couple seasons, there's one part about them that 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 needed to be changed, and that was the maturity level. There were there were reports from Shams a month ago with there was no circumstance where Dylan Brooks was coming back. And though that has been refuted by his agent and stuff, it feels like Dylan Brooks is not coming back. This is one of the youngest teams. I think they were the second to third youngest team in basketball. And they've had an immense amount of success for a team this young. But they are this young and they lack the maturity. The This, going, all of that, the gritty in. I'm not saying it should go away. But a guy like Marcus Smart has been this head steady force of a veteran for years. I mean, you got to think about the veteran in that locker room over the last couple of seasons has been Steven Adams. And I know me and you might see Steven Adams as a 60-year-old NBA player. He's not even in his 30s yet. I don't think Marcus Smart is, is either. But Marcus Smart has had the experience like no other. He's played in the NBA Finals. He's played in a million conference finals games. He's been a quality, high-leverage role player for a very, very long time. And some of that stuff, the locker room stuff, for the Grizzlies at least, matter way more than the on-court stuff. The one thing that scares me a little bit about the on-court stuff is that eventually John Moran will come back. And we're talking about, as of right now, again, we don't know what the rest of the free agency period is going to look like for the Memphis Grizzlies. We're talking about a lineup that has John Moran, Marcus Smart, and Desmond Bain as their top three wing players or their, their guard wing players. And that's just not big enough. Especially in a Western Conference where you're going to go against uh, a Kevin Durant in a potential series or LeBron James in a potential series. it's uh, You asking Desmond Bain to do that? No, his wingspan is the same as mine. And he's like seven inches taller than me. Nine inches taller than me? I, I don't know. He's taller than me, but he's got a short wingspan. Marcus Smart has a history of being able to guard the bigger players, but you want him to be your sole recipe, your, your sole solution to guarding LeBron in a potential playoff series? I hope that's not what you're thinking. So again, this is er this is like the first week of free or the first week of the offseason. They might still have tricks up their sleeve, but I'm a little bit afraid from that standpoint. I personally, for their sake, wish that Zaire Williams was a lot better than what he was. For, rookie season, Zaire Williams is fine. Even though I think he had the highest defensive rating of anybody in basketball. He was a rookie. But I remember he had a couple games where he didn't stop Steph Curry. Don't make me. Th 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 that's not what I'm thinking. But there's times he was on Steph Curry and I was like, oh, snap. Zaire Williams defensively looks kind of good. And maybe you hope that year three Zaire Williams is a lot better than year two or a lot better than year one because he could get back into the rotation and maybe play a part with him being 6'9". And I heard they even grew a couple inches. So maybe 6'10", 6'11", long wingspan could potentially help there. But I don't know. They don't, they've done a really good job developing talent. And maybe Zaire Williams is just the next one to be developed. I think they will miss Tyus Jones, but it had run his course. You know what I'm saying? When you have a player of that caliber, he took the money. Shout out to him. He got paid before all of this happened. We knew that there was a world where Tyus Jones is going to want to spread his wings. The same thing happened with Monte Morris the previous season. The best backup point guards in basketball are going to want an opportunity to be starting point guards. And now that I think about it, Monte Morris and Tyus Jones are now on the same team. And one of them is going to be real pissed that they got to come off the bench again because I don't think you're starting both of those small guards. But again, it's Washington who are actively trying to be bad. So, so maybe you do. I don't know. I can see a lot of scenarios where the Grizzlies um, look back on this and say, hey, this is a dub. My favorite player of the grit and grind Grizzlies was Tony Allen. Chicago's very own, so that plays a part. I, I love Chicago-born players. But he, he was a former Boston Celtic, if you don't remember. And I don't remember when he ended up a part of the Grizzlies. Let, let me double check. Sheesh, you type in his name and if he played guilty to what? <laughs> oh man, that's not, I didn't know anything about that. Um, So he ended up in Memphis at the age of 28, 29. And he had, had years in Boston where he was really solid. But when he got to Memphis, I mean, that culture, I, whether he was the one that helped build it or it was already installed, I don't even remember. We're talking 2010. He embodied what it was to be a Memphis Grizzly. And if there's anybody in the in the current NBA that can do the same thing, it is Marcus Smart. Same to Jack. How does Marcus Smart right now? Hold on. Marcus Smart is 29. That's eerily similar to when um, Tony Allen ended up there, too. If there's anybody that will embody what it is to be Memphis, to embody the grit and grind, to embody the city, it will be Marcus Smart. You know what I'm saying? So that is another thing. Um, we'll, we'll see how it all plans out or pans out. Uh, I think that Brad Stevens has more tricks up his sleeve, and I'm assuming that the Grizzlies, who is it? 
Zach Cly- Zach who is in charge of whoever it is over there is probably not done either because as we mentioned there's probably a hole at the small four position a big old wing that you can have um, and I ain't talk about David Roddy that's a different kind of big you know what I'm saying um, but again this is one of those trades and I know a lot of you say that Kenny you're you're over optimistic with a lot of trades I just I like player movement man I just really really do and this is one of those player movement deals where I think both teams look at it and say he hey we got what we wanted. Did we give up two first round picks for Marcus Smart? Yeah, but we don't really care because we're the Grizzlies and we're good. You know, the Boston Celtics drafted with that pick should be interesting because they have an opportunity with this draft being as deep as it is to draft somebody at the back end that could help them if it's not now, the next season or the year after that. Um, and I, I envy them for trading into the draft because my favorite team has yet to do that. All right, I'm done. Let me know what you think about this trade. Winners, losers. Wizards didn't even get a first round pick. How can you not, as the Wizards, try to get one of those picks routed to you? At least in the Marcus Morris trade, you got the 30th overall pick. How can you not say, Brad, you don't need the 24th overall pick this season? Give it here. You can keep the other one. Or you don't need that next one. Give it to get, something. You got Tyus Jones. Real, hey, Tyus Jones is really good. And I was asked on a on a podcast once upon a time, who is a player that you want to see on the Bulls? I could have said Giannis, Jokic, and Bede. I said Tyus Jones. That's who I wanted on my Bulls. But he's going to Washington where he can start a bunch of games for a team that might not win a lot. So let me know what you think.